Bruiser Katarina top lane along with Darius mid are absolutely popping off over in Korea this patch So we'll be breaking those down along with eight other new builds you'll want to abuse for 11.21 Jumping right into the Katarina pick, Champion is so strong right now that playing with her Ignite Teleport and building AD Bruiser works extremely well for top lane. Against champions who have skill shot reliant crowd control like Camille and Aurelia, Katarina is seeing a ton of success. Blink from E makes it nearly impossible for something like Aurelia E to land and gives you very strong outplay potential in a lot of matchups. Katarina is at her best when taking quick bursty trades early in lane, which bodes well against bruisers who want more extended fights. After Taking a few trades and chunking the enemy out, you've got Ignite to amplify your lethal range and strike for the solo kill. In regards to the build, a Divine Sunderer into Blade of the Ruined King and Titanic Hydra is working super well for AD Bruiser. Of course, you can still opt for the standard AP setup if your team is in need of magic damage. You'll grab Conqueror as the keystone with Triumph, Tenacity, and Last Stand. Bone Plating and Unflinching are going to work a lot better for secondaries after the Ravenous Hunter nerf. Graves' top lane has seen a massive surge in popularity, especially in the pro scene over the past while, but many players are building him incorrectly. The Collector is extremely overvalued as a second purchase in most regions, besides Korea where they build Bloodthirster way more often. LS is a huge advocate to this setup as well, and for good reason. The combination of Shield Bow and BT turn you into a pseudo tank with immense damage output. You have a disgusting amount of lifesteal, coupled with the fact True Grit from E gives you bonus armor, makes it so difficult for the enemy to take you down. Not only this, but the copious amount of shields you have from items along with running overheal and runes adds to your survivability even further. The stats really help to back up the build too, as Bloodthirster users are winning 57% of the time, as opposed to Collector at 54%. The complete build is a Shield Bow Rush into Bloodthirster 2nd and Infinity Edge 3rd. Rune Page is Fleet Footwork with Overheal, Alacrity, and Coup de Gras. Grab Magical Footwear and Biscuits for secondaries. A setup that always seems to make its way into meta during Worlds is Omnistone Camille, and many pros have been picking it back up for 11.21. Showmaker in specific has been running it on his Camille in solo queue. Although on 99% of champions, Omnistone is pretty subpar, Camille has use for it in specific matchups. The majority of Camille players run Grasp every single game, but if you're playing against a ranged top laner that won't allow you to proc Grasp, it's rather worthless. Of course, in a melee matchups where you'll be trading a ton in lane, Grasp works great, but into picks like Kennen, GP, or Graves, where you want to be taking quick trades around cooldowns, Omnistone will be of more use. For example, if you roll Aftershock, it's going to help you so much more in those short trades where you stun the enemy with E, proc Q, and walk away. Same thing goes for Electrocute, as it will help to chunk the squishy range champs out easier and set them up in lethal range. The full rune page is Omnistone with Magical Footwear, Biscuits, and Approach Velocity. Approach Velocity helps a ton to stick onto those ranged top laners after landing E. Secondary runes are Shield Bash and Second Wind. Build is pretty straightforward as a Divine Sunderer Rush into Ravenous Hydra 2nd and Sterix 3rd is the way to go. As a result of the recent Predator buffs, we're seeing many pro players adapt their rune setups, and that's exactly what Canyon is doing on his Trundle Jungle. The rune opens things up for a more heavy gank style. With Trundle E and Slow from Q, your sticking power is very strong once on top of the enemy. It's just getting there that can be difficult sometimes. By running Predator, you have the ability to charge right up to the opponent, slow them with Q, and save E for when they try to flash away. By doing this, it empowers your gank so much more, and allows them to have a much higher hit rate. The full rune page is Predator with Cheap Shot, Zombie Ward, and Ultimate Hunter. For secondary runes, grab Triumph and Tenacity. The build is somewhat unique as well, with an Anathema's Chain slotted in second. Rushing Divine Sunderer is very standard, but the Anathema's synergizes super well with Trundle's kit. Trundle Ultimate already allows him to steal resist and become super tanky, so if you place the Anathema's active on the fed enemy carry, they'll be dealing pitiful amounts of damage to you in teamfights. The hot topic surrounding League Twitter as of recent has been Riot's decision to potentially remove the all chat feature. Sure, all chat can get a little toxic from time to time, but is it really a pressing issue that needs to be prioritized? For our question of the day, what are your thoughts on this topic? Are you in favor of all chat being removed or would you like to see it live on? Let us know in the comments below. Although Chemtank has been a staple on Udyr for the longest time, Korean junglers are transitioning to Frostfire and winning more often. The idea behind the setup is to run Ghost instead of Flash, combined with Phase Rushes the Keystone, which gives yourself plenty of movement speed. Chemtank active can be a little overkill when running Ghost, therefore you pick up Frostfire so that your sticking power once you've reached the opponent is extremely high. 
Ghost popped while proccing the slow from Frostfire will guarantee the enemy won't have a chance of escaping you. You'll transition into a Dead Man's Plate second which provides even more movement speed. The most optimal third purchase for most games will be Force of Nature, which once again is bolstered with move speed stats. When playing this tank setup, make sure to prioritize Phoenix stance instead of Tiger. Phoenix was just buffed in 11.20, which is a big reason why we're seeing this build gain more traction. As for runes, grab Phase Rush for the Keystone with Nimbus Cloak, Celerity, and Water Walking. Triumph and Tenacity are the most optimal secondaries. And Azir's setup the majority of solo queue players are not using, while tons of pros have hopped on board as of recent, is Summon Airy for the Keystone. Chovy and BDD have both pulled out the rune page at Worlds. Airy is going to amplify your consistent poke power in lane and give you more early presence. Lethal Tempo or Conqueror, which are more common for solo queue, will scale better and provide you with more DPS in teamfights. In those short trade scenarios where you are looking to WQ the opponent, Airy is going to be of more value than Tempo or Conqueror. Keeping this in mind, Airy will work much better for you in ranged matchups or against heavy mobility, where you won't be able to weave in consistent W auto. Both times the setup was run at Worlds, the matchup was against LeBlanc, and due to how mobile the champ is, Airy will offer more power than other rune choices. Complete rune page is Airy followed by Mana Flow, Absolute Focus, and Scorch. By running Absolute Focus and Scorch, it puts heavy emphasis on more laning power. For secondary runes, grab Biscuits and Time Warp Tonic. Build-wise, Illudin's Rush and Azania's second and Void Staff third works well. Our next feature is more of an underrated champion than a build, picking up a ton of traction in Korean solo queue, being Darius Mid. Darius W cooldown saw a massive 2 second reduction in 11.20, which has seen him rocket back up into an S tier position. Mid lane is actually where he's performing the best right now, holding over a 53% win rate at the time of making this video. If we dive into Darius Mid's most common matchups, he's being picked into Yasuo, Silas, Yone, and Aurelia the most. If you thought 53% win rate was nuts, that's nothing as Darius holds over a 57% win rate into all four of those picks. Reason for this is because you start W level 1 and and completely zone those melees off the wave. If they walk up for farm, you smack them with W, and since it's only on a 5 second cooldown, you rinse and repeat once it's back up. Running Ghost as your secondary summoner gives you a potent early skirmish and the ability for quick rotations to help jungler with crab. There should be no reason your jungler doesn't secure double crab when you pick Darius mid into a melee matchup. Core build is Trinity Force Rush into Steric second and Dead Man's Plate third. Pick up Conquer for the Keystone with Triumph, Alacrity, and Last Stand. Best secondaries are Bone Plating and Unflinching. Over the past couple patches, a new trend has emerged for most ADCs where you start Longsword with 3 potions instead of Doran's Blade. Major upside to going this route is that it enables you to reach your core item spike faster. For someone like Misfortune, who can spike with just a serrated Dirk, starting Longsword allows her to purchase Dirk super early on. Lethality items in general are way more effective against champions without armor, so accelerating your item purchases before the enemy has time to pick up armor is great. For Crit Marksman, Noon Quiver, which is the component of Gale Force, Kraken, and Shield Bow feels really good to pick up early in lane. Item is 110% gold efficient from base stats, and then you also have the 20 bonus damage to minion passive, which makes farming super easy. Longsword provides you with an extra 2 AD, so in matchups where you smash the 2v2 early, there's no reason you shouldn't pick it up. 3 potions instead of 1 provides you with 300 more health to work with, which allows you to out-sustain your opponent after early trades. The only major benefit to Doran's Blade is that you have the flat 80 health, which makes you more durable when hard engaged on. For this reason, when playing against a strong opposing duo, starting Doran's over Longsword is fine. It all comes down to the matchup and preference, so look to experiment and see what you prefer. Another champ you should be abusing the recently buffed Predator on is Blitzcrank. 11.21 features a nerf to Guardian, so that will open up more incentive to run Predator too. In matchups where your kill threat in lane is rather minimal, running Predator can amplify your carry potential. For example, laning into something like Ezreal Yumi is a nightmare to land hooks against, so Predator will be of more value than Aftershock or Guardian. Grab boots on your first base and look to make an impact mid lane. Another factor that can sway your decision to run Predator or not is based on which champ your mid laner is playing. If you have a mid like Uxian or LeBlanc who have great mobility and strong follow up, then playing around them will be very profitable. On the other hand, if you have a Vladimir or Kassadin who don't offer a whole lot early, playing for lane and taking Guardian or Aftershock would be more ideal. There's many different angles to consider in regards to rune choice on Blitz, which is actually really great as it means players who are able to adapt will see the most success. Sample rune page is Predator with Cheap Shot, Zombie Ward, and Relentless Hunter. Grab Hex Flash and Cosmic Insight for secondaries. For the build, rush Shiralias followed by Zeke 2nd and Knight's Vow 3rd. 
And the final setup we have for you guys today is a hyper aggro one for Nami, which involves running Electrocute as the keystone. We are seeing this being played by many pro Nami players in solo queue to enhance early kill threat. When paired with an ADC who has strong lane power like Lucian, Draven, or Misfortune, this is where Electro slots in best. Your follow-up burst on any bubble hit is massive, and ability to capitalize on early picks helps the snowball really hard. On the flip side, in matchups where your early kill potential is subpar, then opting for the standard airy remains a good choice. The complete rune page is Electrocute with Cheap Shot, Zombie Ward, and Relentless Hunter. Secondaries are Mana Flow Band and Scorch. As for the build, rush an Imperial Mandate into Chemtech Putrefire 2nd and Staff of Flowing Water 3rd. Alright guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little more about skill cap. So, we offer a 5 division rank up guarantee, and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us. We've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well, in fact, that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of premium league guides on the internet. We add over 20 videos a week. With over 1,600 guides curated into over 100 courses, no one can compare. We've also sent challenger players into ELO Hell 714 times and counting, where they commentate how to carry live. They also respond to all questions asked. Sign up today for as little as $4.99 a month if you are serious about improving. So there you have it, guys. Those are 10 new Korean builds to abuse for patch 11.21. We appreciate you watching. Good luck in solo queue, and we'll catch you in the next one.